we are going to, to make today a shooting of a panoramic photo of uh, Pátio Pio do Prato, which is one of the most uh, interesting and antique things in Almada. It is a small square uh, with an, an opening and, uh, it, and it is the place where uh, some of the most important things happen here in Almada. It was the place for the, the, the first presentation of uh, some uh, Gil Vicente's play and, uh, the, and the name of Prior do Crato is also quite important in 16th century Portuguese history. Well, the head has been good and not... Uh, you, yeah, I did not, not use screws and it's a, a wooden head and it uh, allows the camera to to go front and, and back and uh, to position the camera on its side too. It's uh, well, it's quite nice, quite different from all I, all I have ever seen. But uh, I think I will have to make some new. <laughs> I think I'll have to. to make some arrangements on, on this hand. Uh, we are going to use a Samsung uh, NX10 camera with a 30 millimeter. We are going to use a Samsung camera with a 30 millimeter lens. Uh, as usual on a panoramic shooting we'll have to use it on manual. This is a semi-wide angle lens and uh, I hope it will work as the head is not in its full condition, but uh, we'll try to show you how to make a panoramic photo. First of all, we'll need a bubble level, and this one uh, goes on the Ocho Water camera. And one of the most important parts is to have the axis of the lens aligned with the axis of rotation of the camera, and we'll do it. It's not too difficult. We'll tighten the screw here. Other important part is the front and back alignment as we we'll have to find the, the point of non-parallax. Uh, in here I will put the camera on this position uh, and we are uh, more or less ready to shoot. We we'll have to use the camera on a, a manual and we'll take a measurement to, and to see, well, turn it on, of course, uh, and to make a measurement and see uh, what, what kind of exposure can we use. Uh, it's important too to have the, the camera on manual photos as uh, we will tend to focus and pop it back and uh, that isn't uh, quite good. on the, the I want to have it have a greater detail. Yes, and we will have to, to put on the 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 the, the easel also on on a manual. To, uh, to handle the use is it's, it's quite good. Now the main the main thing is trying to, to have the camera on level and uh, to, to try to overlap the frames so we, we can get an even panorama. Uh, we'll start from that corner as I do want to have the the, the way out uh, quite uh, in the middle or. Uh, not in the one on one of the extremes of the frame. From now, it's uh, it's quite quick. Here, frame does overlap. 
Now we'll have the, 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 the red car. Another friend with part of the red car. And we'll go shooting all the, the, the circle. Now I'm going to show you the, the, the several frames. There is some always some overlapping, so we can have a, a better way of uh, aligning things. The red car. It was nicer with no cars, but well, we do we do have cars. This one has nothing to do with it, and we'll try to. Uh, on uh, software trying to align all these photos uh, to get uh, one single panoramic photo. I hope it, it can be done. <laughs>